I was 75 years old when I started shooting this documentary. I owned a different El Camino then. Driving home tonight is eight years after the first shot. During that time, I learned a lot about health, safety, and sleep. But it took all those years for me to understand the only thing I really own is my time. And I remember asking him if he was going to be able to have enough rest to get up to take Ariel to the doctor. She had strep throat. He told me he loved me and he would be home. Motorist, he looks like he's in very bad shape, like his car is totaled. There's a whole lot of smoke, and he's up in like the, um, the embankment there. We routinely work excessive hours uh, with, with no objections. One of the uh, beefs of some people uh, about the film more early on that it was too optimistic about uh, what this movement 12 on and 12 off could do. That's maybe the first step to do what we were talking about, about an international alliance of decent people making movies. Because um, some invisible force has um, kept us doing things which nobody you could talk to who works in the film business thinks is a good idea. We're the only group of industrial workers in the world fighting for a 14-hour day. The main thing that you just said, I have to say myself, even though it's been quite a while, it's a very personal, emotional situation to me. There were long hours, probably the longest hours I've ever experienced. We had, on this picture, we had three 20-hour days. There's no question it becomes a problem. We were consistently doing 14 to 18 hour days. We were working uh, days into nights and nights into days. We were out in the cold at night and in the day too because it was winter time. Dad loved his work and he got caught up in the work and so he just ended up pouring himself into those jobs and, um, and working himself literally to death. <laughs> what these schedules are doing is simply building in that time. Um, it is not just a managerial uh, negotiating thing. It is an issue of life and death. It needs that emotion to carry it because for an audience, we as an audience to witness the impact because, you know, people do want to work in films and it can be, a, 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 it is a very exciting job and people study hard to become filmmakers. But, you know, when we realize that at, at the top level, um, there are studios make a lot of money from uh, people's excessive hours. And what, what I worry about at the, at the creative level is that certainly I know from my own experience working very long hours, I've just finished a film a 
few months ago where we were doing regularly 60 and 70 hour days. And by the end of it, I, you know, I couldn't think straight, I couldn't light, I, I, I just wanted to go home. So, you know, apart from what producers see it as maximizing time on set, uh, we're not making better movies, that's for sure. You're correct. I think the big message, the big question of the film is what force makes us do something which on every level, you know, health, safety, life itself, uh, the relationship between uh, work and, 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 and life. Sleep deprivation is, is, is unique to the human. There is no animal that tries, tries to sleep deprive itself. I mean, one of the quotes from the French, you know, the guy said the French that they believe. France, people work to live, whereas it seemed to him that in the United States, they live to work. And so all of us, no matter what we do, uh, that question, that question has to be there. And what the answer is, is mysterious. Is there some God, some rule that says because of a mistaken bottom line that you do something? It has any, anything to do with art and even less anything to do with the humanity of the people working on the project because at that point is history. Capitalism doesn't give a shit about the men. And that doesn't just go for sleep. That does, does anything in life that has no positive human value. In fact, the contrary. People who have the sleep loss, sleep dead, who are under working in jobs where they are not allowed to get enough sleep have a risk. They have this, this monkey on their back that's going to seize them literally at any moment. I could see your exasperation behind the camera you know, in many of those interviews when you just realize that you're coming up against uh, solid wall. I don't know of any OSHA regulation that specifies how many hours you can have an employee mm -hmm. work. So what you're saying is that that safety and health has not considered the uh, dangers of uh, repetitive excessive hours. Who do we go to? That's why I came to talk to you. I don't know if you have a union look to that 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 source also. Okay so uh, we got our work cut out for us. Blindness to the, to the real issues, the real issue uh, that is killing people. It's right here in front of us. What triggered um, you to make this documentary specifically? Well, of course, the, um, it was a big secret in Hollywood, even amongst ourselves. No one talked about these excessive hours. And when the assistant cameraman was killed driving home, it may be a kind of examine something and of course all of, when the film came out it was a huge success at Sundance and um, but then there was no um, uh, no regular producer would pick it up to distribute it and I had a person in charge of trying to get the film out there and he said it won't come out there because it's, it's called producer unfriendly and um, so that um, those issues are still on today and, and most just regular people think that it has to do with fatigue and tiredness and, and what has been known medically now is it, it affects the body, affects the brain, affects aspects of health that doesn't go away uh, when you take a rest after excessive hours. All lost sleep and that is the sleep you obtain on a daily basis less than your daily requirement accumulates what triggers me i don't know what it is it's from some disease <laughs> I, I like to think of it as, as what my mother brought me up when she put a, a gold star on the refrigerator and it says you're being a good boy it's <laughs> <laughs> a fantastic film that you made is taken off internationally, uh, you know, incrementally from the 12 hours on and off or 12 hours off um, campaign.